Hey guys, Brent Ayler. Uh, just finished up Toledo Bend for the Elites in uh, East Texas, right on the border of Texas and Louisiana. It's my first time being there. I uh, really enjoyed the lake. I'd love to go back. Uh, I had a great first day and then just kind of an average, below average the next two days, but at least I made that first cut, got you know good check and some good points for the, uh, the 2016 season. Uh, but it's kind of typical this time of year. The shad spawn is a big deal first thing in the morning. Uh, for me, I really need to get a couple key bites first thing because it was slow after that. Uh, and for me to get uh, really hit the shad spawn, at, at three baits actually. One was just a swim bait. This is just a three quarter ounce exposed jig head. This is a bass tri trick swim bait. I threw this on a 7.6 flipping stick Tatula and then I ran that with a Tatula Type R, the new CT, and I run it on a 6.3 gear ratio reel. I throw it on 16 pound. This is 16 pound Sunline Sniper. 16 pound is heavy enough, but I can also fish a little bit deeper if I need to. What I looked for was grass, uh, eelgrass, milfoil. Uh, it seemed like the shad were spawning around that stuff, and then also around some of this hay grass as well. So I would throw that out in front of it. Uh, first thing in the morning if I saw him push a little bit push bait then I'd have a gunfish 115 ready uh, it seemed like when they're pushing bait and they're on the surface if I threw that swim bait in there to get down below them they wouldn't bite it but the gunfish 115 on top is uh, you know was a key bait for me uh, this is on a Tatula XT rod it's a seven foot medium light action rod and I threw it on 30 pound Sunline SX braided line with a 19 pound leader uh, that's what I always run for top water is this 30 to 19 pound mono. You can use fluorocarbon because I'm really only using about a, a two foot leader. So if you need to use fluorocarbon, it won't make the, the bait sink because it's really just a short piece of leader. Uh, but that was my setup. I threw it on the Zillion, uh, the SV spool, the compact reel. Uh, that's what I did for my top water. Uh, later in the day, I would go and fish shallow grass with a vibrating jig. Uh, this is a brand new, it's actually a prototype trailer from Yamamoto. This thing will be out any day now. I uh, use that as the trailer. This is just a 3 8 ounce uh, vibrating jig. And then on that, I threw it on a Tatula grass rod. This is a 7.2 medium heavy glass rod. Uh, it's a good crankbait rod, good spinnerbait rod, and a very good vibrating jig rod. I threw that on a Tatula uh, Type R CT. Uh, and I put that on 20 pound Sunline Sniper uh, was, was how I used that. Uh, then when it got calm and kind of slow, uh, I went out and uh, I found some areas that had deep grass that, that had some milfoil that was down in about 12, almost 15 feet uh, on some points. And so I went out and I threw a six inch Sanko uh, Texas rig with a 3 8 ounce weight. That's a pretty heavy bait, but I threw it because I wanted it to kind of bury down that grass. When the sun got high and it got calm, those fish seemed to kind of bury in the grass. And I was casting this, so I'd get out on these points and I'd try and get on the side of the point and cast to the very end of that grass on the end of that point. Uh, and I caught a couple of key fish. I caught a five and a four pounder on the first day uh, doing that. And I threw that on a 7-4 heavy action Tatula frog rod. Uh, that's just a good casting if you're going to do any kind of a, a heavy jig, three quarter ounce jig, or a big worm like this for casting fishing deep. It's a great rod for doing that. Uh, I used 16 pound Sunline Sniper for that and a Tatula Type R CT reel in the 8.1 gear ratio. Uh, that just helps you take up more line when you need to set the hooks. You know, another thing that I did uh, here on Toledo Bend was I threw a drop shot. I, I found a few fish offshore. Uh, actually a lot of fish offshore, but they're small fish and one day I was driving by one of my waypoints going to go fish some shallow grass and I pulled up uh, Where the school of fish were and, and I ended up catching uh, Probably four or five off of one spot where I didn't catch a keeper uh, There were so many down there in the school and I thought they were all shorts, but I pulled up and uh, Was able to catch a couple of key fish one of them was a three pounder that I weighed in that day, so uh, I just threw a drop shot and I fished vertical. I would stare at my humber and just drop straight to them. It seemed like if I cast to them, they wouldn't bite. I had to troll them out around on this long point until I'd find one and drop to it. And when I found one, I'd see 10 or 12 with it. 
but this is a standard drop shot setup for me. Uh, this is a seven foot Steez medium action rod. This is a Steez uh, 301 reel. And then uh, what I do is I run 12 pound SX braided line, Sunline SX1 braided line. And then I run an eight pound Sunline uh, FC sniper fluorocarbon leader. And I run about a, a eight or 10 foot uh, leader to the you know my mainline braid to, to my fluorocarbon leader. Uh, this right here is just a uh, it, it's a Gamagatsu straight shank hook, but it's one that that Roboworm makes. It's called the rebarb hook. It's a one aught, and this is just a six inch uh, Roboworm in uh, red crawler. And, and so I caught a lot of fish on a lot of short fish, but like I said, I caught a three pounder, I caught a two and a half pounder, a couple good fish that I had in my limit that day. So. Uh, it was one thing that I did. They were out deep. They're about 22 feet of water to 25. Uh, and again, it was kind of a weird situation. I saw a bunch of fish down there in practice. Didn't catch any keepers, but I was driving by it and kind of did a button hook and came back to it and, and pulled up and instantly caught a couple. So uh, this did help me out on one of the days. That was what I ended up doing at Toledo Bend. Like I said, I got a check. Uh, I did all right in the tournament. I had a couple opportunities. I lost a couple of fish. I missed a couple of fish on top water as well. Uh, which you just you see a big giant boil you hang them for just a second and they come off uh, but That's what happens with topwater fishing. So uh, really a fun event. I'd love to go back again uh, All the stuff I talked about is is on tackle warehouse right here Just click on the links below and uh, you'll be on your way and when I was flipping laydowns I just use a Texas rig Senko It doesn't just fall straight down. It spirals big flat body with a big chunky back section here uh, flat claws, those claws kick. Uh, the reason why I went with the two is it dives shallower. Uh, it's also more buoyant. It's a little bit thicker than a 1.5.